So ladies and gentlemen, 8th of July to 15th of February next year. So 8th July 2024 to 15th February 2025. Long time. There is this transit of Rahu in the nakshatra of Uttara Bhadrapada. So currently as you know Rahu is in Pisces and he is in Revati nakshatra. And because Rahu and Ketu are always retrograde so it is entering now it will enter the previous nakshatra of Uttara Bhadrapada. Now Uttar Bhadrapada is the nakshatra ruled by question mark. Please write, write down in the comments which is the pla planet that rules this nakshatra and who is the DT for this nakshatra. Let me see. Write two things. Nak planetary Lordship and the DT. Let me see who is the first one to write it all. All right. Don't use Google and don't use chat GPT. <laughs> so Uttar Bhadrapada as you know is a very 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 evolved nakshatra where there is culmination of spiritual truths, energy and life lessons. So therefore this is a nakshatra which is one of the best nakshatras. Now when I say best I don't mean that it will make you a millionaire. <laughs> Alright so therefore best means it will fill you with lessons but it's very weird because Ideally, this comes before Revati Nakshatra because Revati is the Nakshatra where you get moksha finally, right? But now, as you know, it's Rahu. So for Rahu, it always has to be the opposite. So it's like you got moksha and now you are getting lessons, which is very weird. I mean, how can you get moksha without getting lessons? But that's what Rahu does. He lets you forget things and then he tells you, oh, actually, this is the reason why I forgot this. So what will happen to you as per your ascendant? Let's go and dig deep down inside from Aries to Pisces. And before that, if you are new, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel and write your insights in the comments below. How was the transit of Rahu or how is it going on for transit in Revati? And what do you think will happen for you as per your ascendant? when Rahu enters Uttar Bhadrapada, all right? And for personalized consultations, please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him when Rahu enters Uttar Bhadrapada and every other nakshatra also, all right? So the first is always Aries. So what's going on for Aries? So Aries, as you know, this transit is in your 12th house. Mm -hmm. And from there, Rahu is aspecting your fourth house and your eighth house, of course, because Rahu aspects the fifth and the ninth, right? <clears throat> so therefore, for you, there are many opportunities uh, which can give you spiritual growth. So going to some spiritual community. And as I said, Uttar Bhadrapada is an akshatra of lesson. So try to gain lesson. So whenever you go to a spiritual community, always try to sit with your guru and ask ask your guru what is this what is that you know try to learn try to go deep try to go into deep meditation try to explore your hidden talents also because 12th house is something which is hidden so for you it can happen that there is something inside of you which you are not aware of at all and because of that you you don't know anything about it and when when rahu transits uttara bhadrapada it can suddenly come out right so therefore there could be huge gains, you know, in your uh, intuition. Your intuition may increase 10 times, okay? So if you have a gut feeling about something or somebody, don't ignore it, all right? Very important. And there could be some connection to, like, you, you may discover there is there are some subconscious patterns, like unknowingly you are doing certain things. So now is the time you have to sit down and monitor. Monitor whom yourself or your thoughts, all right? Or all of these. So monitor yourself externally, internally, mentally, intellectually, psychologically, physically. So overall, you should monitor yourself. And there could be, uh, it could, it's recommended that you go to some spiritual retreat, okay, go in the forest or in near some ocean, sea or, you know, any river, you know, go to some holy place, go to some theatra. And do introspection, do spiritual practices, okay? Introspect on every area of your life, very important. Now, on the negative side, there could be some uh, hidden expenses which you might incur. There could be some health problems. As you know, 12th house is um, hospitalization. But 
the nakshatra of Uttar Bhadrapada can give you lessons regarding you know why you are having this health problem. Okay, so it's a nakshatra which gives you uh, all the secrets basically. Okay, and there could be you know some potential loneliness or isolation, but use this isolation to go deep within yourself. You know, meditate. Chant the holy names of God and try to find uh, where is the problem, who is the problem. <laughs> because we are not the problems, right? Everybody else is the problem. Don't forget, right? We are perfect. Only problem is our planets are not rice, right? <laughs> so the best thing for you to do now is to embrace solitude. Okay, so embrace solitude. Go towards discovering yourself, you know, like self-discovery and be a bit careful with your finances, all right? Because 12th house, as you know, is the house of losses. And there could be some uh, some avenue that opens up where, you know, you might waste money. So you, you may either spend money or lose money, all right? So there's a difference, okay? So therefore, take care of your finances. Go deep down within yourself. Go to a retreat and become more spiritual. And think about yourself and think about your life, all right? All the best, Aries. Now we go to Taurus. Taurus Lagna, where is this transit? 11th house transit. Very, very, very important. But Rahu is already in your 11th. <laughs> so from the 11th, he's aspecting your 3rd house and of course your 7th house, right? So for you, this could be, this is the best time to get wisdom. Uttar Bhadrapada is all about wisdom. But from whom? From your network circles, your friends, and 11th house can also show people in your family who are very successful, okay? Successful not financially only, but overall, holistically, you know, if they are successful, they have a good health, uh, they have a good brain, they have a good mind, you know, they have good financial resources, they are doing good in their profession, they have a good married life, they have good children. So, if you know somebody in your family who uh, has all-around success, overall, in reasonably good terms, in all areas of their life, then now is the time that you go and seek wisdom from them. Or you can get uh, some uh, consultation from some uh, experienced personality in that particular field where you want to improve. So suppose you want to uh, get back into shape and you want to have a good health, then go and get consultation from some uh, dietitian or some gym instructor, all right? And also uh, you should support humanitarian causes because 11th house shows humanitarian causes. And also you might gain a lot by associating with members of the spiritual community because any community is seen from the 11th house and you can be benefited from the wisdom of the members of the spiritual community, all right? So therefore, uh, focus on your long-term gains, focus on becoming more wise. And now for you, you should try to align your personal goals with some bigger goals, which means, you know, Goal, goals of some society, some organization, some country, some party, you know, party, not just political. <laughs> but in general, try to try to try to understand that we are just like a drop in the ocean. You know? And what do they say in Hindi? Boon boon se sagar banta. It's like that, which means, you know, every drop when it combines, it turns into an ocean, right? So therefore, <clears throat> try to align your goals and, you know, become a part of something bigger. And on the flip side, uh, there could be some misunderstandings with friends, you know. Um, uh, yeah, there could be some issues with your partnerships or some communication related problems could be there. But understand that because of Uttar Bhadar Pada, you might have to do things in a more structured and a serious way, okay. Because Uttar Bhadar Pada is a very serious nakshatra. It's a great nakshatra. It's a, it is one of the sthira nakshatras, but but it is quite serious, okay? It, it, it is not an akshatra which likes to beat around the bush. So therefore, if you are facing some problems, then understand that maybe, you know, you are behaving a bit superficially at times, you know, could be depending on your dashas. So you need to do clear-cut communication. That does not mean you, are, you become very blunt, but it certainly means that uh, you have to be honest with themselves, with yourself, and you also have to communicate what do what is that you want, all right? So therefore, all the best, Taurus. Uh, focus on gaining more from your network circles. Network with people, learn from them, and elevate your consciousness spiritually also, all right? All the best, Taurus. Take care. 
Now we go to Gemini. So for Gemini, what's going on? This transit is in your 10th house. Rahu is already there. And Rahu's one of the best positions of Rahu is the 10th house. And from there, he's aspecting your second house, your sixth house, and um, which means your Artha Trikon is active, right? Well, what is the Artha Trikon? Artha Trikon is the Trikon that gives you resources, not just financial, you know, but any resource that helps you gain more in life, all right? So therefore, you can have exciting career opportunities. Uh, you can get exciting leadership roles. Uh, but you need to understand that Rahu in 10th uh, can make you a bit immoral in your profession sometimes. So therefore, it might give you the tendency to do things which are not very good. So make sure you resist that. Okay. And be moral, be ethical. And within your profession, you need to recognize wisdom. And you need to recognize those people who are performing well. So therefore, you need to understand that you have to show integrity in your workplace. Which means you may get some big job. You may get a big uh, contract or something like that. But at the same time, you have to respect those people who helped you get there. right? So therefore, go for that big shot. Go for that big opportunity that you always wanted. But... You need to understand that you have to, you are you are not completely self-made. People love to say, you know, I'm, I'm self-made, he's self-made, she's self-made. But we are not self-made actually. You know, we are made by our parents, our gurus and God himself, right? So therefore, we need to have some humility. So Gemini, you might develop this pride you know, that, oh yeah, you know, I'm the king of the world. I have had this grand success, you know, I want a million dollars in like, you know, one year. So therefore, uh, you might become a bit proud and you might, God may take a <laughs> pin and blow off the balloon, balloon, then you might be into trouble because of that. So therefore, you need to balance your career ambitions with uh, pride, ego and arrogance. Okay, that's very important. And on the flip side, there could be some uh, stress in your profession also. So stress could come because of over expectation. Okay, so therefore... We know Uttar Bhadarpada is an nakshatra of knowledge and um, it's it's a very deep nakshatra. It's a very, it's one of the great nakshatras which teaches you life lessons. Okay, so therefore Gemini, if you are feeling that you might have some problem in your profession, then maybe uh, the reason is that you are expecting too much. So lower your expectations a bit. I know this is contrary to what people will tell you if Rahu is transiting 10, they will say, you know, astrologers might say, oh, ex you know, don't think anything, sky is the limit. Well, yes, sky is the limit, but that does not mean you, you downgrade yourself and you downgrade others. So it could happen that you are a boss and some of your employees uh, let you down, okay? So then don't curse them, don't abuse them, don't uh, harass them, <laughs> don't punish them beyond what they should be, all right? So therefore, all the best, Gemini, understand that you should have humility and go for the big career goals and try to learn from your career instincts, okay? Try to gain wisdom from what is happening. Try to see, observe people and observe situations and don't forget to observe the most important person in this world who is you yourself. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gemini. Please take care. So now we go to cancer. What's going on, cancer? Mm -hmm. Cancer. <laughs> <laughs> ninth house rahu a strong one a difficult one but could be a blessed one so now from there he's aspecting your trines which are the trines the trines are the trines <laughs> the first and the fifth so <clears throat> very important the ninth house transit of rahu and in uttar bhadrapada will make you deeply philosophical deeply spiritual it will it will make you desire to read the Vedas, Puranas, Upanishads, the Sutra, Jyantra, Mudra, Tantra, Mantra, Jyotish, everything that is there. <laughs> so you might have a desire that I want to finish the end of the world by reading everything, by uh, gaining spiritual wisdom. So gain deep philosophical insights, go deep into things, learn, learn and learn. All right. So 
there could be higher learning you know you could learn more about yourself you know maybe you lack confidence so learn about yourself how to become more confident maybe you lack assertiveness so become more assertive maybe you maybe you are lacking some integrity or accountability you know so try to develop integrity accountability so uttar bhadrapada in trines brilliant for self development okay so now is the time that you forget everything external forget does not mean you just forget it but now your top priority should be on working uh, on yourself so work on yourself work on your talents work on your belief systems you know work on your discipline but this is more of a thought process all right work on your thought process so explore different types of knowledge learn new languages and also it's important that you you purposefully seek spiritual enlightenment okay so this is the time you might meet your guru and you may get initiated all right because the fifth house is the house of mantra which is receiving the aspect so you may get guru diksha also right now uh, there could be some uh, potential clashes this is the downside there could be some ideological clashes you know within your family or you know your friend circle so make sure that you don't become too obsessed about your Uh, ideology and your or your ideologies right and there could be some issues that you might face you might face during your travel so make sure if you are traveling you do it properly you know have travel insurance so therefore the advice for you is to uh, learn more read more become a better person be self obsessed with self development uh, be accepting of diverse beliefs and uh, be mindful of uh, different perspectives and try to see where you fit in there all right so cancer amazing time congratulations wish you all the best make the best use of this transit all right all the best once again now we go to leo lagna <clears throat> so for leo what's going on this transit is in the 8th house 8th house and uttar bhadrapada my god what a consensus <laughs> because originally uttar bhadrapada is in the 12th house of pisces and 8th house is another trine to the 12th house as you know right and from there he is aspecting your 4th house and your 12th house the 12th house is always there now again for you leo so there could be profound uh, personal transformation you know and you could un uncover different hidden talents there could be gains in stock market Uh, or in the crypto market there could be gains uh, which you get in terms of your health see eighth house is longevity and also death okay so you might be gaining some profound insights about your uh, own existing health okay which means there could be some health issue which comes up and you you actually discover why you were having this in the first place so there could be some cure that you might find within your health and on the down downside you know there could be some issues with healing okay now on the positive you might suddenly develop interest in you know occult things like you know astrology numerology palmistry tarot reiki pranic healing you know yoga um, asan and all this all right so <clears throat> if you feel that you are gravitating towards occult sciences then this is the best time for you to go go to the next level and learn more about it okay and there could be potential gains in your through inheritance also okay and financial stability could go for a toss which means it could be up and it could also be down suddenly all right so make sure you balance out your risks okay and also there could be some emotional turbulence this is very important why do i say this because eighth house is the graveyard eighth house is the smashan everywhere everything everything goes to die all right so you might feel as if you know you might feel as if you are dying in some area of life it might happen if your dashas are very bad <clears throat> i won't just say good things always you know like many astrologers do oh every house is good every house is nice well yes they are but some houses have pain in them you you can't just avoid that all right so if there is a situation in your personal life you know where you are going through a breakup or you know something has happened recently 
then understand that you know it will take some time you know the poison will be there all right but don't worry it will go but it will take some time all right so for you the best thing to do is you should embrace transformation eighth house is the house of transformation so you must embrace transformation and you should manage your finances properly so hire a financial advisor or assistant if required all right very 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 important okay so all the best leos time for personal transformation don't fear it embrace it and you will love it all right thank you so much now we go to virgo so what's going on virgo virgo is directly your seventh house right so what's going on with virgo this Rahu in Uttar Bhadrapada will aspect the third and eleventh, the trines, very important house. So you will have opportunities to develop deep, meaningful relationships. See, Uttar Bhadrapada is all about depth and meaningfulness. It's about genuine connections. It's about genuine friendships. It is about genuine um, relationships with people. So don't just see the seventh house as the house of marriage i mean it is undoubtedly but seventh house is also the house which gives you people in general all right so therefore you need to strengthen your existing relationships and you need to de deepen your uh, collaborative abilities now what what does it mean it means you know reach out to people move out of your comfort zone do something radically different and also try to collaborate with people uh, that are different from you. Okay, very, very, very important. And you should focus on, uh, see, there's one challenge with the seventh house transit. It's that, you know, you you're, you might have a challenge balancing your personal and your professional lives. Okay, so make sure you are doing good in your profession, but at the same time, you are taking care of your spouse, your married life. All right, very important. And on the downside, there could be some conflict in your existing married life because, uh, see, it's not that you are just fighting, but why there is the conflict? Because, or rather, let me say, there is resolution of conflict. But what happens? See, when this transit is there, you might suddenly see or feel that, you know, you and your spouse, you are like, you know, arguing too much on things. Now you will say, oh yeah, you know, it's a bad transit after all, right? That's why we are arguing. No, it's not like that. You may feel that you are arguing more. But what is actually happening is that you are not arguing because of things now. You are arguing because you want to settle certain things that happened long back in the past. But you have not found closure to all these things. Okay, so if you feel you are, something is not right then go and talk it talk it out talk it with that concerned person may not be your spouse maybe with anybody all right so therefore don't try to brush things under under the carpet it will not work with uttara bhadrapada nakshatra because uttara bhadrapada tells you sort out your things it may be painful but you should sort it out all right so therefore try to do clear communication give that hard talk a chance you know you need to talk hard sometimes and seek harmony in relationships i am very sure you will do great all right all the best virgo lagna people now libra lagna people for libra ascendance this transit is in your sixth house and from there he's aspecting your earth houses the tenth house and the second house right so that means this is an incredible opportunity for you to focus on your health and to focus on your finances. Sixth house is also the house of disease. So make sure you keep diseases away. Okay, so for you, Libra Lagna people, it's very important that you are keeping a note about your you know problems of your health. So get some checkup done through the doctor regularly at least once in three months six months okay that is very good and also you need to understand that now you might need to take help of some you know holistic medicine or something like that otherwise you may feel that one type of medicine is not working okay and you need to understand that 
you have to focus on your habits, you know. See, sixth house is the house of job and money and all this, you know. But ultimately, sixth house shows your habits. So, if you are focusing too much on earning money and you are not able to earn money for some reason, then maybe now it's a time you should check and try to figure out why are you not able to earn money? What's wrong with you? Or what's wrong with your habits, right? Because the more your habits are improving, the more you are improving. And the more you are improving, the more your lifestyle is improving. And the more your lifestyle improves, the more money you get, okay? So therefore, focus on your health, your daily routines. Monitor every freaking hour. <clears throat> so every hour from morning 6 a.m. till night 10 p.m. What are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Where are you wasting every minute? Track down everything. Become obsessed with tracking and productivity. If you don't do this, things may run out of your control, Libra Lagna people. All right. So there could be work-related stress and financial worries. It could be there. It could be a problem. But don't worry. Focus on your habits. All right. So manage your finances and focus on your well-being. So well-being of your mind and your body and your thoughts, your intellect. All right. So there should be holistic well-being and not just financially. All right. So if you do this, I'm sure you will be able to tackle any problem that comes in your life. All right. Take care, Libra Lagna. Now we go to Scorpio. What's going on, Scorpio? Scorpio Lagna, this transit is in your fifth house. Rahu is already there. Fifth house, from there he aspects your ninth house and he aspects your first house. Uttar Bhadarpada, fifth house. Incredible time for getting Guru Diksha. Diksha, initiation from a bonafide spiritual master. No great time for doing research, great time for love romance, great time for interacting with your children or having children. So if you're married and you are planning to have children, then this is the best time. <clears throat> there could be creative breakthroughs. There could be joy and fulfillment through creative and romantic pursuits. You know? So therefore, you need to understand that now is the time that you have to think why you are living this life. Are you living a life or a lie? <laughs> so if you feel you are li living a lie, then maybe it's the time for you to leave, to live a life, okay? So you are the captain of the ship. The first house is receiving the aspect. So you have to take care of your own life, my dear sir, my dear madam. Nobody will do it for you, okay? The only caution I would give you is before you make any speculative investments, you know, like investing in some penny stocks or, you know, in some meme coins, <laughs> then you need to make sure that you have done the proper fundamental research and you are not just doing it out of FOMO, fear of missing out, all right? Otherwise, you might, you may get a big jolt, all right, because it's Rahu. So with speculative investments, be very careful. And... At the end, for you, the most important thing, Scorpio Lagna, is to ask yourself this question. Why do I get up in the morning? Try asking this question to yourself. <laughs> Try asking this question to yourself right now or tomorrow morning when you get up. Because if you feel you don't have an answer, then oof, there is some homework that has to be done. And this is the best time for doing that homework. All right. So therefore, don't ignore this transit. You make the best use of this transit. Congratulations. This transit is in your trinal houses. But understand that you might have to figure out answers to questions which you don't know. Or you know what you don't want to give an answer. All right. So... Figure out who you are, what do you want in life and how to make yourself better and your life, how to take your life to the next level and to become the best version of yourself. Congratulations, Scorpio, and wish you all the best. Now we go to Sagittarius. So what's going on, Sagittarius? This transit is in your fourth house and Sagittarius, this aspect is in your eighth and twelfth. Best time for research. There is no, uh, there is nothing else in this transit. <laughs> you need to do research, research on 
things that you are interested in research on things that you know you should be doing but you don't want to do so research on things which are essential and are also matching with your interests okay so therefore try to focus on education knowledge learning research and also fourth house as you know is the home so try to create an environment you know where you can nurture other people you know maybe some children or you know somebody you know your aging parents or somebody so <clears throat> and also do it in a spiritual way you know so for example uh, if you have children or you have parents you know then try to do some satsang program in your house you know some something like a bhagavad sapta or something that can really help you and uh, you might focus on property related gains or also on emotional stability okay this might be very important so for sagittarius is very important that you identify who is like your who's like your family who is who is like your home are family members giving you the vibe of a home or they are just giving you the vibe of a house all right so or maybe you have some other people like you know your friends or somebody else or some members of the spiritual community who are not from your bloodline but they 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 will give their life to you if required so therefore focus on your home focus on your family and focus on your emotional well being okay for you om namo bhagavate vasudevaya this mantra may be very important for you all right so please uh, chant this mantra if possible this can make you very strong emotionally if required and uh, on the flip side there could be some domestic stress there could be some hidden family issues you know so you might have to get you might have to become a peacemaker in your family okay, at times you might have to uh, become like a deal breaker <laughs> at times okay or a matchmaker at times <clears throat> a king maker at times so try to create harmony within your family members with compassion and try to enlighten them spiritually so now it is the time for sagittarius to bring god into your house this is all that you should know and everything else will fall in place all right all the best sagittarius and wish you all the best so now we go to capricorn capricorn what's going on this transit is in your third house third house from there rahu aspects your seventh and of course the house of gains which is your 11th house Incre incredible transit aspecting the 11th <clears throat> now there could be issues which you face in your communication or you might get opportunities so you might be in invited for some podcast or some <clears throat> You know, you might crack some big companies, interview, and you might get a new job, and you might crack certifications. So, third house is also about certifications. But remember, this is not just third house. This is also Uttar Bhadra Pada. So, this means you should focus on not just developing your communication skills, <clears throat> but you should also ask this question to yourself. What is that you want to communicate? What is that which you have to provide, which you have to offer to the world? What is that which you can provide to others through which others can be benefited? So what is your skill basically? Because third house is also learning, you know, handy skills. Okay, third house is the hands basically, handy skills. So handy skills does not mean to become a carpenter or a goldsmith. <laughs> not just that, but skills which you can transfer to others, okay, which others can transfer to you. <clears throat> so therefore, uh, focus on your communication with your siblings, with your neighbors, or, you know, your colleagues, or through anybody, but learn more, okay, develop skills. So gaining skills should be your first priority. <clears throat> and during this period, you might feel that, you know, you need to focus a bit more, more on your short-term goals rather than your long-term goals. And you might be interested in, you know, trips, short distance travels and all this, okay. And you might want to interact more with people in general. This is very important, okay. So don't be isolated, you know, try to go out there, put yourself out in the space and interact more with people and with others. And on the flip side, on the challenging end, there could be some problems that you face with your you know, siblings, neighbors at times. 
but understand that this can be resolved with good good uh, communication and with the proper negotiation negotiating strategy all right so proper negotiation has to be done if you see there are some problems with your near and dear ones okay now when i say near and dear i don't mean family members only here but people who are in your vicinity okay could be colleagues and neighbors also now so therefore for you the most important thing is skill development and proper communication so learn from others and also teach others all right if you do this capricorn you will be benefited all right take care wish you all the best now we go to aquarius what's going on aquarius what is there for you this transit is in your second house and from there rahu aspects your sixth oops sixth and the tenth all right <laughs> so your earth houses are active so there could be financial growth through investments because Uttara Bhadrapada is a Sthira Nakshatra. It shows, you know, gradual increase of wealth and finances. Incredible time for improving your financial knowledge. Okay, so learn more about bank investment, bond investments, you know, stock market, you know, cryptocurrency, real estate, you know, whatever, any, any kind of investment. Learn more about wealth. Learn more about money. Okay. So try to aim for increased stability and security, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot of money in, you know, penny stocks or um, meme coins in cryptocurrency, then try to allocate it towards more uh, safety assets, okay? That could be good for you. And also at the same time, you have to understand that you will also have to take some risks, okay? Uh, aiming too much for uh, stability might make your life a bit stagnant right so therefore aim for stability and also with some risk so have that proper balance so you might feel that you know now you have to align your materialistic goals with uh, spiritual goals okay because you might feel that you know you are doing everything in life but you are not getting that happiness okay now you may be wondering why in the universe is that happening so therefore you need to understand that the ultimate aim of life is not just to earn money. Money is very important. Second house is our house. But because Uttara Bhadrapada is a very spiritual nakshatra, so you might feel the need of doing something spiritual. This is something uh, which I also said for Sagittarius because for Sagittarius, this transit is in the fourth house. But even for you Aquarius, Try to do some spiritual programs in your home. Okay, very, very important with your family members. And on the flip side, there could be some financial mismanagement because don't forget it's Rahu after all. Okay, and there could be work-related issues. Okay, and also some family issues because second house shows your family, wealth and your work also. Okay, so make sure you are eating good because second house is also food habits. And don't forget your sixth house is receiving the aspect. So there could be some diseases which could you know, pop up if you are not paying attention to the food. And make sure you are doing things ethically. So prioritize you know, ethical investments. Don't cheat others. Don't backstab any of your family members or closed ones. All right. So Aquarius, um, great time for financial growth and stability and make sure you include god in your family all right take care aquarius wish you all the best so last but not the least we go to pisces so for pisces this transit is in your lagna itself and from there he's aspecting your fifth house and of course the ninth house of god and gurus so first house transit do i need to say <laughs> One of the Rahu's, one of the most uh, loved houses, one of Rahu's favorite houses. Rahu has many favorite houses in the chart and one of them is definitely the Ascendant, the first house, all right? So therefore, if you don't know what the first house is, let me tell you, it's just a summary of your life and nothing else. Which means first house tells you about everything in your life. Okay, so if you are a Pisces Ascendant and you are thinking, what the heck is going on in my life? Where the hell am I going wrong? What should I do in a way that I can benefit myself and others? Then this is the best time. So 
now is the time that you do deep introspection and you be honest with yourself you be honest with your thoughts your capacity and your desires okay very 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 important so this can be a great time for your personal development and also for your spiritual upbringing spiritual growth you might meet your guru you might go deep into scriptural study okay so practice self awareness and um, you know, be obsessed with developing yourself this is what you should do this is where your focus should be because the trinal houses are all about self development okay so if you focus on self development then i'm sure you will do very good and in terms of challenges there could be some identity crisis which you might face you know suddenly you might feel oh what is going on should i be doing this in my life should i be staying with this company should i maintain this marriage should i do this should i do that so these questions could pop up from nowhere okay and if this is popping up then i don't think you are doing something wrong it means uttar bhadra pada is the nakshatra of deep introspection and it is now forcing you to introspect deep within yourself all right and at the end you need to embrace self discovery because if you don't discover yourself then who will discover you for you <laughs> all right so therefore understand that now is the time to be the captain of your life first house shows the captain you should drive the ship in the right direction so if you are confused take help of your gurus take help of your mentors which is the ninth house and take help of your subordinates who will give you proper feedback all right so all the best pisces don't waste this transit self discovery self learning and spiritual progress and being honest with yourself this is the clue to success all right thank you so much everybody please take care jai shri ram